Well, welcome. Welcome to the telethon. Yes. Amen. We're here tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We're here tonight to celebrate the Cross TV. And the Cross TV has a footprint throughout the entire world. And we're bringing the message to people on every part of the planet. We're fulfilling the Great Commission at the Cross TV. And at the Cross TV, we have amazing leaders, amazing pastors, evangelists, prophets, and we have incredible worship. And tonight, worship is going to be from the Shiloh Tabernacle Quiet Church, the worship team, and they are awesome, and they are anointed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to have Pastor Ruth Hillary, who is the pastor of the Shiloh Tabernacle Church. Amen. And all the way from Kansas City, Matthew Smoller, International House of Prayer, IHOP. Amen. Pastor, Pastor Dr. Laura Meyer, In Time Ministries, International Bible University. Amen. Oh, Ambassador. Clyde Rivers with I Change Nations. Amen. Pastor John Torres from Living Word of Garden Grove. Amen. Woo! Amen. Whoa, sounds like he has a whole cheering section. Amen. And we're going to have Pastor Ryan Beck from the Living Word of Buena Park. Get ready, we're, we're in store for an exciting evening full of worship and praise and ministry. And you're going to be touched. Tonight, you're going to be changed, delivered, and set free. The word is going to go out, and people's lives are going to be affected. Now let us worship with the Shiloh Tabernacle Church worship team. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is God good or what? <laughs> We have an amazing God. We have an amazing God. And you know, I'm grateful for TV stations like Cross TV that preach the gospel. Because at the name of Jesus, the word of God says, every knee shall bow on heaven and earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord. And we know that these TV, th these TV stations, they're broadcasting the gospel. And Lord, I just thank you tonight for Cross TV. Lord, I thank you for what you've done. And Lord, I thank you for the name of Jesus that's being spread out, oh God. Lord, I thank you that chains have been broken, that lives have been changed, oh God. And Lord, we're grateful. And we say, Lord, let there be increase. Let there be an increase like never before in Jesus' name. We say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. You break every chain, break every chain, you break every chain. There's so much power in the name of Jesus. There's so much victory in the name of Jesus. We lift your holy name tonight. Oh, we say Jesus. 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 There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Oh, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
so much power, so much power, so much power in your name. So much power, so much power, so much power in your name. Oh, so much power, so much power, so much power in your name. Ha. I just want to say something right now. If you are sick tonight and you need a healing, I want you to stretch out your hand towards that TV screen. We're going to believe that God is going to heal you supernaturally through the name of Jesus. Because there's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain. There's power to bring healing like you've never had before, inside out. So God, I thank you that it's your name, oh God. Every demon flees, oh God. We say, Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, Jesus. You break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, oh, you break every chain, you break every chain, you break every chain. Yeah. Ha. Hallelujah. We thank you, God, that where your spirit is, there is liberty, God. We thank you for your freedom that's in this place, oh God. Hallelujah. We say freedom. When we say freedom, freedom, oh, 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 freedom. Break every chain, 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 break every chain. I'd encourage you to just dance the dance of victory tonight. Yes! Woo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> All sufficient sacrifice. So freely given. Such a price. But our redemption. Heaven's gates. Wait, why? Jesus. You know, there's an army that's rising up. And God, I thank you that we're a part of that army. And tonight, I want to encourage you. This is about giving unto the Lord. <laughs> and as we sow seed, I know that we're a part of the army that sows into the harvest that God is raising up around the world. God, I thank you, God, that you're raising up your army. You're raising up the army. We're raising up the army. Raising up the army, there's an army. There's an army rising up. Are you part of that army? There's an army rising up. There is an army. There's an army rising up. To pray, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Oh, break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Heal every pain, heal every pain, heal every pain, heal every pain. You know, I'm speaking to some people tonight. Maybe you were molested as a child, but God tonight is coming into your living room, and God is healing you. God is healing those years that were taken away from you. God's bringing wholeness into your spirit, soul, and body. So God, I thank you, Lord, tonight that you're bringing that freedom. Heal every pain. Heal every pain. Heal every pain. Break every, break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Whoa. Hallelujah. Hey. 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 Ah. Woo. Wow, we got anointed worship tonight. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you for joining us tonight for this incredible event, this telethon for the Cross TV. And I'm your host, 
Dr. Terry Warren with Christ Citadel International Church here in Los Angeles and in the desert. We're in Palm Springs and Pomona in L.A. and in the Malibu. And we are just excited to be part of this network because the word of God is touching the entire world. Amen. Amen. You know, this, I met this man the other night, this pastor, and he is, he's an amazing man of God. He's, miracles follow him. He's doing amazing work bringing people in from the streets. And, you know, Pastor Ryan Beck from Living Word, Buena Park. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Tonight is an anointed night. God is bringing a special word from every single one of these men and women of God. I pray in the name of Jesus that his glory and his anointing breakthrough power will stir the atmosphere in every house, every city, every nation, and every person that is tuned in to what they're hearing today. Today is a day for you to counterbalance every situation, every circumstance, and everything that's coming against your calling in God. Right now there's people that have the potential to be city takers, world changers, to be people that can break the chains. You've been called to throw your seed into good ground. This is a mobile triage. This is a mobile mash unit that goes from house to house, bringing the glory and the word of God. You will be touched tonight in a way you've not been touched before. If you're watching right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, realize this is a divine appointment. You have divine appointments, you have divine relationships, and divine situations. Tonight is a divine appointment with God. As you're tuning in, get ready. 2017, the year of Jubilee, this is redemption of your finances, your health, and your circumstances. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus, as you sit here and God convicts you, sow your seed in Jesus' name. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You know, he said something. He said world changers. And I want to tell you, this next gentleman, Ambassador Dr. Clyde Rivers, is a world changer. He just came back from Zambia where he met with the president or the former president and the first lady. And he has, in the last few years, met with over 15 presidents of 15 countries. And he does something. He brings the gospel but he brings the practical gospel. You know, Jesus touched people's lives first, and then he healed, he delivered, he set free, he met their needs. This man is telling a practical story. He's bringing peace and development to these countries, and he's showing himself. See, they're, they're seeing Jesus by his actions and not by what he says. And I, I, I am excited to have him because he's my friend. I've been with him at certain places. I... You know, at first I didn't realize he was an anointed preacher. I thought he was a politician. But he's an anointed man of God. Amen. Hey, Dr. Rivers. Amen. Thank you so much. Uh, let, let me really challenge you on something. The top of the nations are looking for answers. They tried everything else. They tried false religions. They tried everything, and they're missing Jesus, but they're not looking for a religious Jesus. Nations are looking for a king that can dominate this world. I sat with my world leaders. I actually sat last week with the man that freed Nelson Mandela. I'm sitting in his house, and we're talking, and there's such a need for Jesus, not the religious one. Nations are saying, we've seen your religion, we've not seen your God. Let me tell you on something. The Cross TV, these kind of networks are going to be what changes the world because through media, you mold the minds of what people think. This network needs to be funded so well but I want to challenge every one of you in here. I grew up special education. I rode a short bus 
to a special school in Victorville, California. I'm now the ambassador of a country that's not my own, appointed by the president of a country, made me an ambassador. Short bus, special school. But when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, I started praying in tongues so much. And God idiot-proofed me from my own self. And what he did, <clears throat> and what he did, and I want to challenge everyone, what he did is this. When I would pray in the spirit, I would receive it while it was a mystery before my head could engage. And I began to walk in realms where the presidents of nations, they want to meet me. I'm not there for a handshake anymore. I'm there to give them what thus saith the Lord over their countries. And I want to tell you this. There's an anointing upon everyone listening. And I want to tell you, as you're, as you're watching on TV, give. And I, I, want to, I want to tell you why. The atmosphere that I bring is one of authority with governments of the world. If you sow your seed into that atmosphere, you'll be a partaker of that grace. Now, now, as I'm standing in front of the leaders of, of the nation, I can't go, yeah, yeah, won't you? Come on now. I can't do that. What I do, I stand there, and I'll speak words, and the Spirit of God fills the words, and the atmosphere in the room changes because Jesus comes in. And I want to tell you something. This TV network that is touching the world, you have no idea how the world is being framed by the word of God that comes through this network. I, I have a word for you. Change your expectation in 2017. Let the Lord do above and beyond what you can ask or imagine, and that's not predicated on your history. It's predicated on the mystery that you were created for. Special education, short bus, talking to my presidents of the world. I'm the poster child for ADHD when it had no definition. Are you listening out there? If you're ADHD, it just means they found no way to deal with your energy yet. <clears throat> they found no way to define your gift. Your gift is unlimited. I encourage every one of you, you are, I will, please give me a couple more minutes and I'll be done. You have to learn that when he says, pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, that's not a prayer, that is legislation. You are legislating from heaven to the earth. And let me challenge you on something. Man, I'm, I'm getting this. Uh, I think at times what, what is taking place in the world is God doesn't answer religion. He only answers legislation. He's the king of a kingdom. And if we legislate his kingdom to come, his will be done. We will transform things in the world. I encourage everyone as I close this evening, you need to write checks. You need to sew in because this TV network is reaching where feet cannot go. The image that comes from this network is, is changing this world. I am living proof. I work with the presidents of the world. And they, they will watch this network. So you want to touch the top? Let your dollars touch the top. So we need you to give all over the world so that Jesus can be feathered through the vehicle of media. God bless you all. Change the world. Dr. Terry Warner. <clears throat> that was powerful. Go, on, go online now and donate. Go to your phones and call. God is getting ready to do something here tonight. You know, we are so blessed to have so many great people. And we have Pastor Dr. Meyer with us. Lorella, 
Okay, but Meyer, right? Yes, she's with us tonight. She's going to have a word for us. And, you know, she's been in ministry a long time. She, they have a university. So, you know, they teach wisdom. And wisdom is the principal thing. So let's welcome Dr. Meyer. Praise the Lord. Father, as I think about what you're doing in the cross television, it was at the cross where I first saw the light. And so millions and millions of people through the cross TV will bow at the cross and receive life everlasting. Father, I thank you. Not only will there be provision for vision, but there will be such an abundance that indeed many nations will be fed ministering to the poor. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to share with you. There was multitudes and multitudes that followed Jesus. And the multitudes were so weary. They were so weary. Jesus with compassion, passion is a fire, encompassing with love. And he called his disciples, and he said, feed them. And the Spirit of the Lord is upon Dr. Joseph Nasrallah. And he's seeing with compassion the multitudes. And he's calling the programmers forth, feed them. Well, in our own little nervous way, and certainly as the brother had given a testimony before, I know what it is to feel all shaken and filled with fear. But as we are taking of the living bread, God delivers us. And so with compassion, he's calling the programmers, he's calling you out there. Well, we don't have very much, $5, $10. Some businessmen have thousands. Bring me what you have. And a little boy brought loaves and fishes. You may be young in the Lord. But that loaves and that fishes represent the fullness of God. And he said, all you need to do is make them sit down. And I will feed them. And so with a miracle, I would like to say, Dr. Joseph, Jesus is breaking the bread all over. And so I'm saying, Bring your loaves and fishes. Bring the $5. Bring the $10. Bring thousands of dollars. Write your checks, and you will see the multitudes fed, and not a crumb will be wasted. There were seven ba basketfuls, which was completion, and you will be blessed beyond measure. God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Meyer. You know, we have such anointed people on this network, and they go all over the world. And I want to encourage you. You see, we have a goal here, and that goal is to raise $300,000. And we have a special opportunity because what's happened is somebody has committed to matching any gift over five hundred. dollars so when you give 500, it becomes 1,000. And when you give 1,000, it becomes 2. And 5 becomes 10, and 10 becomes 20. Amen? Multiplication, that's what Jesus is all about. That's what God does. So before we hear the next anointed woman of God, we're going to have our worship lead us into some more music from the Shiloh Church, Shiloh Tabernacle Church, the worship team, very anointed. you tonight 
What is it that you desire? What is it that you want to see? You see, David said, God, I have one thing that I want to see, and that's I want to see you, God. And that's our cry tonight, God. We want to see you. We want to see your glory, God. We want to see you manifested throughout the nations, oh God, that all would see and all would know you. For your word says, God, that before you return, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. So God, I thank you for a spreading out of that knowledge. I thank you, God, for a touch of your presence, oh God, because it's better to be with you one day than thousands elsewhere. heart is satisfied for him my heart is satisfied within your presence within your presence I sing beneath I sing beneath the shadow of your wings better is one day better is one day in your courts Better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, than thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, than thousands elsewhere. Than thousands elsewhere. One thing I ask, God, this is our cry tonight. One thing. I asked and I would see to see your beauty to see your beauty to find you to find you in the place your glory dwells ah. one thing I ask one thing I To see your beauty, to find you, to find you in the place your glory dwells. Better is one day, better is one day in your courts, better is one day in your house, better is one day in your courts, thousands elsewhere. Better, better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts. Thousands of my heart and flesh, my heart and flesh cry out for you, the living God. Your spirit's water to my soul. I've tasted and I've seen. Come once and get to me, I will draw near to you, I will draw near to you. I'm drawing near to you, I'm drawing near to you, I'm drawing near to you, Jesus. I'm drawing near to you, I'm drawing near Drawing near to you, Jesus. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, come, all who are thirsty, all who are weary, all who need a touch from God. Yeah. You might be a backslider tonight. Maybe you left the ways of God, but God is saying, come back to me. Come back to me, my son. Come back to me, my daughter. Maybe you never had an encounter with Jesus, but tonight is the night for you to encounter his love. It's better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts. Thousands elsewhere. Better is one day in your courts. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your courts. Thousands elsewhere. Thousands elsewhere. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, 
we need you, Jesus. Oh, how we need you. We can't make it a moment without Jesus. We can't make it a moment without his love. If you don't have his love in your life, your life is empty. And I thank you, God, tonight that you're filling lives with your love, with your presence, oh God. Oh, better is one day in your voice. Better is one day in your house. Better is one day in your voice. Thousands of Lord, you know, it seems to be that when you go to a church, everything comes from the top down. And when the pastor is anointed, and when the pastor is full of the Holy Spirit, the worship is always filled with the Holy Spirit and anointed. I've heard this pastor preach. She is an anointed woman of God, filled with the Holy Spirit and on fire. Pastor Ruth Hillary from Shiloh Tabernacle Church. Let's welcome her. Oh, my God. First of all, I really want to give God the glory. My God. You know, the Lord told me when I was young, the Lord, he said, if you swallow my glory, you're going to die. You better give back all the glory that belongs to you. So why don't we just praise Jesus? Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You deserve it. Oh, God, we are nothing without you. Oh, God, my God, you, you may have a seat. Hallelujah. Oh, God, thank you, Jesus. These are all my kids. Hallelujah. Most of us live together. Pastor Polly, Pastor Drake, Pastor Andrew, Pastor Chandra, Pastor Jenny, Pastor Timothy, Pastor Jessica, and my reverend little one there. By God's grace, they have all grown, not just physically, but spiritually. You know, the hardest thing is when the Lord told me, if I can't empty my wallet, I can't really empty my heart. It's all about heart. When I got saved 25 years ago, it's hard to ask people to give money. In fact, for the, last, for the first few years of our ministry with my husband, we never even asked for tithes and offering. We get into the business of God's ministry. We forget and God rebuke us. You are not giving my people an opportunity to be blessed. So right now, those who are watching and all of us here, and I dare not to say, everyone, to give you, I'm not giving. We've been full-time in the ministry for the last seven years. And God told me, he said, you will live by faith. I said, God, I'm a medical doctor in the Philippines. So you know how hard for me to think here, to think in my spirit, man, because I'm so much in this. So when he asked me to quit our job, my, my husband, I said, who's going to pay for the seven-bedroom house? Who's going to pay for the seven TV, uh, days TV show? Who's going to pay for the 700 capacity church? God said, who gave you all those? Who gave you all those, child? I am on my knees. I said, I'm sorry, God. Forgive me, Lord. So you know what? I'm not begging anybody to give. I'm commanding everybody to give because even God in this work, in 2 King, right? The God himself commanded what? The widow and the son to what? To feed the prophet. A widow does nothing. See, giving is not about if you have something to give. Giving is about obedience. 100% obedience. Million times God said, when people give us money, it's so easy to say, oh, this is for the rent money for the church. This is for this. God said, give. And it shall be given unto you. Yeah. Press down, shake it together. Well, man, will give unto your bosom. Yeah. Since, I continue, since I got saved, when I empty my wallet, man, this wallet never been filled all the time. It's always filled. Do I look poor? By the way, we're seven in the seven-bedroom home. Still seven-bedroom home. The bank that wants to take our home went bankrupt. We're still in a seven days TV show. Someone, God touched that person to give us the money to pay for that seven days TV show. We're still in our church and God healed me. As a medical doctor, I used to wear eyeglasses because at 22, I'm a doctor. 
So could you imagine? He healed my body inside out. I have a heart disease before. So the money is not the issue. If he cannot get your heart, he cannot really go, go through you and do a supernatural. Whatever your heart is, there's your treasure. I just, you know, God gave me this. We always say carry the cross. What does it mean to carry the cross? Give, die. Man, I love clothes before. I love everything. But all you see right now was given to me. I have so many clothes and shoes right now. Our fridge, instead of being empty fridge, we have two fridge and a freezer. You can never outgive God. God said this is the year of super abundance. Those who will walk in such radical obedience will walk in such radical favor. One day of favor with a king is what equivalent to the lifetime. I can be a doctor right now earning millions and millions. You know, what I, you know my, my, my classmates in, in the Philippines, when God allowed me to pray for the president, the vice president, the senate, and the celebrities, I'm staying with the celebrities without begging them. See that? Favor, you don't beg favor. Once you're in the perfect will of God, man, they see the cross. When they see the cross, they give. Why? Because what the Lord did on the cross, my God. You can never repay anything. God said, you are the living sacrifice. You, you should be enjoying giving. People get mad at me when they give me money and they give it right away. And I said, well, don't get mad. When you give it to me, God said, that doesn't belong to me no more. When God said to give, you better give. And also we're commanding the riches in 1 Timothy 6. He's commanding all the ones who have riches that don't be haughty. Don't think that that's it. God said, you better give and share so that you're going to have an eternal life. So he's commanding from what? The poorest to the poor, the widow, the two might. Come on, it's my God. Jesus said it's better because he gave, that person gave out of poverty. Right now, I'm going to break the spirit of poverty amongst the Christians. Come on. We are not supposed to be the one in poverty. We're supposed to be the one living in lifestyle of rich and famous. Why? We are serving the richest, the most famous Jesus. Anyway, carrying the cross. I can't tell my husband or my kids, hey, carry the cross for me. I have to carry the cross for me. Most people are... <laughs> What? It's types of tithing and offering again? No, wow, tithing and offering here. I've seen God multiply in my own life at 55, going on 55 now. My strength is back as if I'm stronger now than I was 22 as a doctor. I'm back to 2020 vision. I have a new heart. I got a new heart without surgery. I don't take any medicine no more. Abundant life means in every aspect of your life. You think, just like you said, the celebrities and the uh, uh, ambassador earlier, of course, God called us to the seven mountains. This is part of the seven mountains. This pulpit is the biggest platform. It reaches so many people, thousands and thousands of people. That's why the Lord has been saying, the treasure of the wicked is already here. It's in the hands of the believer, the true believer, who say, God, I don't care. You want my life. I'm giving you my life. There's nothing in this money. This wallet is nothing. Yeah. Revelation 12, 11. They overcome him. Who is that? That devil. Why? By, by our testimony. Testimony that by seven years, my God, there's not one time I don't have a food. I don't have clothing. Everything is provided. I told you, nobody, there's a second bank that tried to take our home. Said, this is God's house. We were in the court and all the, the, all the lawyers there. Lady, what are you doing? I said, I'm praying. Praying to who? Jesus. Who's Jesus? The one who created you and I. The one who's going to do a miracle in this court. Hey, lady, wake up. If you're in this court, it means the bank owns the house. I said, you know what? That's not our house. We did not lose that house because we lost our job. We quit our job. We were earning 300000 a year. 
But we quit our job to do the gospel of Jesus to the full blast. That is God's house. See, when you give everything, you are God's property. Nobody and nothing can touch you, including your bank account. Hallelujah. So guess what? A lawyer didn't show up, and he's a Christian. Because he knows he's a goner. In the natural mind, he's a goner. You know what I told the lawyers? I said, this is God's house. If it's our house, we're willing. He give it to us, we give it back. See, the 10% is nothing. You should be giving 100%. 100% why he owns everything. Could you imagine if you double multiply the 100%? Oh, my God. Anyway, long story short, the lawyer said, you know, this and that. And we were called by the judge. And the judge, we, my husband said, oh, I told my husband, come inside, darling. Our lawyer has been here with us. Once you give it all, once you empty your wallet, you empty your heart. You can ask anything. You draw near to him and he will draw nigh to you. We need to continue to cleanse our hearts because it's what is double minded. I want to give, but don't say but. There's no faith in but. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. He is what? Rewarder of those cheerful givers. He says he's going to give you an abundant grace in 2 Corinthians 9. The grace is what we need. In all things, we can do everything. So, the judge said, you don't need a lawyer. I favor you. This is what the judge said. I favor you guys. And the lawyer of the bank, it was there standing. He said, they forgot to put the name, the title of the house in their name in a certain time period. How can you forget the seven-bedroom house? God created what? A confusion in the camp of the enemy. Listen, God said, if you truly worship God in all things, in your giving, in your lifestyle, oh God, the confusion is there. You know, they even give us money because they made so many mistakes. So, and again, the number two, God said, he's looking for the mature sonship. Who's the mature ones there. Because she's giving inheritance right now. Why? If you are sons of God, God said we are what? Heirs of God and joint heir with Jesus. Everything the word said will manifest in you. In Psalm 24, he owns everything. The earth and the fullness thereof. Psalm 28, if you, I said you ask for the nations and I will give you the nations. As your inheritance. And what at the end part of the world is your possession. Wow. Hallelujah. He's going to give you houses. Cars that you have not built. Not according to your bank account. Not according to anything else. Or your job situation. Seven years. No job. Just surrendering everything. Surrendering everything. No, the house is still there. Now they gave us a loan modification. How can you modify something that's nothing? You see what I'm saying? Sonship. So it's commanding everyone to give and to give. You cannot be, this is the year that's going to be too obvious. Who's really serving God with all of their heart, might, and soul. Because it's going to be the beginning of the best of the best or your worst of your worst. Which one do you want? Come on, John 3, 16, we all know that. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. For so whoever who believes will have an eternal life. And then verse John 3, 16, so he gave his life. Now we ought to give our life. Including money. Well, unfortunately, there's so many who cannot give their money. He gave us the ability to get wealth. Without him, without the grace of God, we are nothing. I'm going to do a prophetic act, if you don't mind this one. When I was young, I have to fast and pray for $25. So, you know what overflowing and fullness is? Romans 14, 17. What is the kingdom of God? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. You need to be joyful in your giving, in your, in your, 
in everything, in your time, in your resources. You know, when I first had my leather jacket, God said, give. God, I almost barely got it. I saved for this money, God. God said, give it. He doesn't want us to give what? The ugliest clothes we have, the ugliest appliances we have. Why? He owns everything. He deserves the best of the best. God said, give me the best. Your life and everything about you. So most people are just contented with just being filled up 100%. This is cool. You survive 100%. But what he's expecting of us is abundant, which is an overflow. Once you overflow in that stage of faith, a mustard seed, you go to the next faith. Now you're willing to give not just $25, but $100 or $1,000 or more. Never ending abundance. Then when you're so overflowing in that stage, you perfected. God said, right? First Peter 5.10. If the God of all grace, you know, you went through all the suffering, will be perfecting you, establishing you, strengthening you, and settling you. Now, this is our year. The biggest of the biggest. He wants great faith. Those who want to walk in the water, you better know how to give. Haka'ashe <laughs> The glory that you're carrying will cover the earth. This network has been televising so many nations now. Every now and then, you have to go back. It's all about faith. It's related. If you see, there's a heart in, in the cross. It's an intimacy with the lover of your soul. You don't have, I don't have to tell all my kids, we're all living together, to love each other. We all look different and yet we have the same father. They have given up their lives. They have given up their money and everything. Not because we told them, but because they love God. So it's the intimacy and the faith that never ends. So when you feel like overflow, you become the bank of heaven that never ends. It never ends the flow. I'm going to ask all my children for the money. Those who are in the thing, what did, I, what did I tell you guys? The money. Because I'm not telling everyone watching and you guys to give if we're not giving. It's hypocrisy. Love without action is hypocrisy. We need to overflow. We're addicted to the presence of God. We're addicted to it. Why? It's all about Him. Hallelujah. gonna ask everyone those and this last song do you mind if one more song can we just marching we're gonna march forward together as an army no more lack the one that you see lack you'll see no more this year hallelujah if you obey and trust hallelujah okay come on We've got the victory. As we move forward, we sow. Morning, noon, and night, God said, sow. You sow, sow, sow. And yes, you sow. Because you don't know what the work of God is, and you know what happened? Come on. You never know it, what will take. What is going to be wrong? It's so good, God said. This place is full of the funding of heaven. So nothing in this world. The Lord said prophetically, this place will be so abundant. We're calling everyone in the north, south, east, west, and around the world to sow, to sow. It will be multiplied, my God, to the fullness of a flow. We've got the victory. Oh, we've got the victory. My Watching and moving on, on. 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 on.
cup when you put it in the pot, there's all the boys for the dance. You gotta move forward and everything. Over the darkness, turn down the words of the enemy's hands. We're marching, we're marching, we're moving. Upward, the kingdom of God is on a forceful advance. We're taking dominion over the darkness. Tear down the works of the enemy's hands. We've got the victory. We've got the victory. We've got the victory by the blood of the Lamb. We've got the victory. Was that powerful or what? Hallelujah. 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 We are so blessed to have this group, this anointed group, this anointed leader. And like I say, it from, comes from the top. Amen. She is anointed and her worship is anointed. And these are awesome, awesome, awesome. So visit her if you're in the area. Shiloh Tabernacle Church. Where is Shiloh? Rancho Cucamonga. If you're in Rancho Cucamonga, stop and visit, and, and you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. So remember now, for every gift over $1,000, it's matched. Give that 1000 Write a check. It becomes 2000 and 5 becomes 10 and 10 becomes 20 We need to raise $300,000 for this network so we can do what God has given the vision to Joseph Nazarella to do. And I got to tell you something. This is a man who is willing to risk his life for the furtherance of the gospel. Not all of you know his testimony, but he was tortured, imprisoned, and willing to risk his life. And when he was saved by Jesus, when God saved him, he came to America and said, I'm going to go and let that word be alive to them in the Middle East and in Egypt where he's from. And he came here and he's doing that, but he's doing that and more. And you, you know, when you donate, when you give to this ministry, you need to understand that you're touching lives around the world. And when those lives are touched, everyone that gives also receives a reward in heaven for what goes on. So it's not just you're giving to this local ministry, you're giving for the word of the gospel to be preached around the world. That's very important to know. Very important. You out there, get on your phones. Get on the Internet. Donate. Make a pledge. We need to raise that $300,000. You know, this next gentleman, I just met him. And it's Matthew... Sonola Smolder from IHOP. Now, this is an organization that is very well known, International House of Prayer. It's not IHOP for the pancakes. It's IHOP for the Holy Spirit. Amen. And this, this, it's that, you know, prayer moves mountains. And this is an organization that prays continuously, 24-7. They pray. And because of that, change occurs. So I'd like to welcome Matthew now to give us a word. Hallelujah. It was 14 years ago, this very season, raised in a Jewish home in Chicago, Illinois. I found myself on a campus late at night in my dorm room, just got kicked out of a fraternity, 20 years old, in America, the center of our nation, Illinois, the heartland of America, God found my heart. Is he calling your heart today? It says in 1 Samuel 16, 9, that the Lord is searching to and fro. And he's looking. His eyes and his mind are in agreement. He's not confused about what he's looking for. He's looking for a heart to show himself strong through. And at that moment in time, 
as I was thinking about my life and pondering why am I on this earth, I turned on the television set. And at that very moment, I'm watching Christian television proclaiming to me a Jewish heart, a Jewish soul, the gospel of salvation in Jesus, Yeshua, my Messiah, Isa. And what I realized at that very moment was that God was jealous for my heart at that moment. And so I surrendered. And at that very moment, I knew that the cost was high. I knew that I, would, I was not raised in a family that had taught me to believe in Jesus. And I knew that I would have to go and make my confession of faith. But let me tell you that the emboldened witness that I experienced on television got into my spirit and made me bold. And since that day, I have been a witness of the Lord, being willing to be persecuted both by family and by my Jewish brethren. And I can honestly say that it's because of that moment in time that those brothers and sisters were behind the screen waiting to minister to me. That they were God's eyes. They were God's mind. They were the object of God's jealousy that I needed to see with my eyes. I needed to hear with my ears, and I needed to respond with a heart of surrender. And so at this very moment, some of you are wondering why you just turned this TV on, and the Spirit of the Lord says it's because the eyes of the Lord, the heart of the Lord are for you. They're turning towards you right now. And many of us in this studio can attest that at that moment, we didn't hesitate. We felt this compelling love that drove us to our knees. And at that very point in time, God filled us with such a life, such an energy from him that we've never looked back. We might have been tempted to look back, but we never looked back and surrendered to our past. And with the Lord, he says that his eyes are jealous, his mind is jealous, and his heart is towards you. And if you hear that, the sound of his voice as a father calling you, just in your own way, reach out to him. Call to him and say, I hear you, Lord. What would you have me do? It was many, many years before these generations that we're living in that a man stepped on a horse and he was on his way. He was pursuing a cause for the greater good of his people. And maybe you are like that. In a nation right now where many are pursuing a cause that they think is right. But this man named Saul was knocked off of his horse. A blinding light shone on him. And the voice came from the light and said, why are you persecuting me? Don't you know I have something special for you to do? I have nations and kings. I have a people group for you to minister to. And some of you today are hearing that for the first time in your heart. I was made for more. And so I, I challenge you, I urge you to respond to the gospel like never before and to give of yourself to the gospel like never before. That these are the days where the Lord is calling many to people groups, to nations and kings. And he says, my eyes are on you, my heart is towards you, and I can use you, yes, even like the men and women of God you've seen on this very platform today. God says, there will be a nameless and faceless army. Will you be a part of that nameless and faceless army? Will you say yes? Will you sow? Will you give? Will you surrender? The Father says, I am here for you. And he will strengthen and establish what concerns you. So as you sow, remember that his heart is towards you. His mind is towards you. His affections are towards you. And he himself will use you in mighty, mighty ways. In the name of the Lord. Amen. Pastor Badillo, please come. We have a pastor in the audience. Let it come say a couple of words, please. Three years ago, I started working in Mexico for no reason and without understanding. 
I really don't know how God works. Got to be crazy people in order to serve. Got to be crazy people in order to give life. Got to be crazy people to give your money, your time, your life, all you have. But I'll tell you something. You got nothing to give because everything is belongs to him. He owns everything. And I, I give you thanks to this channel, Discovering All of This Earth. Dr. Joseph, with a grateful heart, he's given everything, his family, the torture that he have in his country. He got to be crazy. He got to be crazy. <laughs> Suffering torture for no reason. How do you know Jesus exists? How do you know? Because he feel it in his heart. You guys got to be crazy to be spending your time in this uh, time. But Guru has to know we have the heart of God. We have the heart of God. He's calling us. He's calling us. And that's for reals. Many times we come back without eating anything because we don't have a penny to, to spare. Because we give everything there. We be bringing food, clothing, shoes, crossing the border and legal with food just because we got to be crazy. And this time, I'm not telling you, I'm telling the girl. Two years ago, Dr. Joseph told me we need $200,000, Pastor. And uh, he gave me orders, and I receive it. And I start working and telling them, here, right here in this place. And somebody came with $200,000 in the next week because God is good. And I'm telling you, you, the, you spend your money and dogs and cats and horses and roosters and flowers. You're spending so much. And some of you have so much. Though you know what to do with that much you have. I tell you what. This is a good channel you can invest. You can put your money if you trust God. Because God is for reals. 1996. A doctor gave me six months life. Short life. After that long time, I'm here. I know that to the signs, I didn't exist. But to my Jesus Christ, I'm existing here because my God is for reals. I'm not kidding. My God is for reals. And I'm telling all of you who are watching television, you got nowhere to spend your money. This is the best place to use your money. Those, those have so much and don't know what to do. Those, they don't know what to do with the much they have. This is the channel. And I'm going to declare right now in the name of Jesus that God is going to touch someone. Do you agree? Do you agree then? Do you agree? You with me? God is going to touch someone. You just was waiting for this moment. And I declare in this moment in the name of Jesus Christ. That you was already. Now is your time. Don't wait. Call. Call to this station and give. Because when you give, you're going to receive much more. Much more. Because my God works like that. I just want to say thank you, Dr. Joseph, for this opportunity. And I want to say to you guys, thank you very much to give me the opportunity to share with you. I can spend all my my all the night telling you how the kids suffer, how the kids asking for a piece of bread. How a man approached approach to me and says, one man came and says, Pastor, could you please give me a piece of bread? And I told him, What? What you say? Could you please give me a piece of bread? And I asked him, Why? 
He says, because I had three days without eating anything. And I told him, no, I cannot give you a piece of bread. I told him, I want you to come to my table. And you're going to have a hot meal tonight. You're going to have a hot meal tonight. And he started crying. And I hugged him. I put my hand, my hand on his shoulder. And he started crying. And I told the people that were with me, please bring him to my table. And he started crying like a baby. He didn't believe it. He, he was thinking, I'm kidding. Have compassion. This channel is helping not just those. Pastor Joseph is helping me. He sent me to TJ. He's supporting me. He's here. This is the truth. And we are helping others. Dr. Joseph, thank you so much. And I know God is going to respond tonight. Just believe it. Do you agree? Do you agree? Do you agree? Raise your hand. Just raise, raise your hand. All of you. And let's pray and let's, let's declare in the name of Jesus. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ that God is going to answer. Because he is so grateful. He is so lovely. He is so smooth. He is so good. God, he never going to forgive this, this pray because he's listening to you. He was waiting for you to believe. If you believe in your heart, if you declare with your mouth, I'm pretty sure that God is going to answer tonight. Thank you, my brothers. What else can I say? The rest of my life that I have, I'm surviving for cancer. They give me six months left. The doctor write down the letter and give me, he told me, I cannot help you no more. Go and die in peace because you're going to die in six months. I never give it, the letter to the organization. I just put it in the trunk in the car, but I read it before. The letter says, whoever concerned this letter, I'm telling you, this man cannot be working and moving no more because he's ready to die. I just make pieces the letter, then drop it in the trunk in the car. I didn't give it. I was so weak. I was so weak. But my God was so strong. My God was so strong. He was so, so strong. I went to my house. And my wife asked me, how you feel? I, I told her, I'm a champion. I'm okay. I never told her that I was already to die. Because I feel it in my heart. When you serve to God, he got the decision, not the signs. Because God is our Lord. Thank you so much. I hope everything, I hope this has served to you. They are listening. This is for real. This is truly. And God knows that I want to spoken the truth because he is for reals in my heart if you invest you're investing in the kingdom don't invest in the religion invest in the kingdom of god god bless you thank you very much god bless you thank you what a powerful testimony what i mean you know there are so many miracles and I know that even on this network, we've had people call in in Australia. We've had people call in from Egypt. We've had people call in and say they'd been healed. Just, you know, God can heal through the TV. God can heal through the Internet. Amen? It says he sent his word, and it healed him. It said he sent his word. How does the word get out there? But through this. I'm going to tell you something. While Jacqueline Brooks comes and gets ready to sing a song, I want you to know something that as a pastor, I could preach 12 hours a day, seven days a week for the next five years and not reach as many people as I would reach on one half hour program here. This network reaches over 125 million households around the world. As a matter of fact, you know, there's an there's a organization called Alexa, and that's the, the organization that rates websites. You need to hear this. That's the organization that rates websites. In other words, it monitors, and, the, and you cannot fake that. You can't create something that doesn't exist because they get the signal from every 
every person that goes on that website. And the reality is that of all the Christian sites in the world, this network reaches more people on the Internet than all the other Christian networks out there. You need to, and that's not, that's not hype. Use a, that's a statistical fact. That cannot be altered. And they reach more than any television, Christian television organization that exists today. This TV network's reach globally. Globally. It reaches them in Africa. We've had people from Africa call when we're on the network. It reaches people in Australia and New Zealand. It reaches people in Europe. It reaches people in the Middle East, and it reaches people here in America. This is truly a global network, and he is truly, he took the Great Commission literally. It said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He is doing it, and you can be a part of it. Your $1,000 donation, your $5,000 donation. You know, there are, there are people out there that have the ability to write $100,000 or $250,000 or even the whole $300,000 that he needs. Let your Holy Spirit, let the, let the Holy Spirit speak to you and tell you what to do. Because I'm going to tell you something. The Bible says to, to sow into fertile soil. I don't know any other soil that's as fertile as this, touching as many lives as this is touching. So go to your phones, go to the Internet. Go on and donate today, now. Go to your phones, go to the Internet, and give to this network. And now, Jacqueline Brooks, we have a special by you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Lord, we are so honored, Lord, that your presence is here in this house, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, your presence is all over the world, Lord, right now, Lord. And, Father, you are putting kings and queens and princes and presidents in the office right now. But, Lord, no king came to do what you did, Father. No king brings salvation but you, Lord. So, Lord, we dedicate this song to you, and we lift you up, and we praise you, our only king, our only Lord, in the name of Jesus. If you know this song, sing along. You are light. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Praise the Lord with me. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Great are you, Lord. Stand up and worship the Lord. You are light. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. All the earth. 
will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your name. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Oh, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You only. We have no idols, Lord. We have nothing that we worship but you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, you've given us so much, and we give it all back to you, Lord. The breath of our lungs, Lord, even that comes from you, Lord. Lord, we have nothing unless you give it to us, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have no eyesight. We cannot hear. We cannot wake up in the morning, Lord, unless you put breath in our lungs. Hallelujah, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you all. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, and show a breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Oh, praise the Lord. That was Jacqueline Brooks from Christ Citadel International Church. And you know, this next man of God, I got to tell you, I've traveled the world with him. We've been to Europe. We've been to several countries in Africa. His ministry started in Africa. He, he's raised many sons and daughters there. As a matter of fact, the last time we were there, I was off one place, he was another, and he sent his sons with me, and they did deliverance. I mean, demons were flying. And this man of God is truly an anointed man of God. He's, he, he's my pastor. Amen. And I got to tell you, he, he preaches the uncompromising word of God, and he truly is who he says he is. He walks the walk and talks the talk. He lives, breathes, eats, and sleeps Jesus. Matter of fact, one day I asked him, what do you do for fun? He said, I pray for people. <laughs> Amen. So without any further ado, I'd like to introduce to you Apostle. He was sent as a missionary here to us. Amen. Apostle Vincent Acosa. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. And thank God for Dr. Joseph and the incredible work that God has given you here and your obedience is serving the world. I also want to thank God for the men and women of God who have been supporting this great vision. God bless all of you. I come just to add a voice to the voices that have already gone off. And I pray that God will touch your hearts and for you to support a worthy cause. I just want to stand on God's word. In Exodus chapter 25 verse 8. God spoke to Moses. He said, build me a sanctuary, and I will come and dwell amongst you. And then the Bible says in verse 940, God showed him in the spirit how he wants it to be built. 
Because mind you, he is the primedia architect. There's no better architect than God. So when he gives a vision, he gives the dimension of the vision. The, even the cause of the material that he, we know that when he even called Noah, he told him the kind of materials, even the measurements and the dimensions for the building of the ark. And they, 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 we have to also know that the ark was the only what instrument of salvation. If you don't get on board, it means you don't have salvation. Death was coming, destruction was coming, and if you are not on board the ark, the only provision of God, it means you are going to perish. And this time God spoke to Moses, he said, me a sanctuary, and I'll come and dwell among them. He gave the dimension, and then he said, go talk to the people. In chapter 35, he gave the item that they should bring, precious. And then he says, those that are of a willing heart, let them bring. The Bible tells us that the people in obedience in Ezra chapter 36, verse 5 to 7, they gave until Moses made the law. And true to his word, in chapter 40, verse 34 to 39, when the tabernacle was completed and being dedicated to God, the presence filled the place that the priest could minister. We also have to see in 2 Samuel 24, 24, King David declared, at that time God has brought a plea because David has done something that wasn't sanctioned by God. He has counted the people. And at the same time, the problem that we have, even as pastors, and even as men and women of faith, amen, we want to put trust in numbers instead of putting trust in God and what he has for us. David was never permitted to count the numbers to know how many numbers were on his side. When God brought him and fetched him out from shepherding the sheep, he didn't have numbers. But then suddenly he has become king and he wants to know how many numbers he has on his side. And I know that somebody is out there in TV line counting the number that you have in your wallet. But God says, I am your number. Trust me. They be counted the numbers. And I know all of a sudden they have become what budget experts. We are counting and David fell afar with the, with the faith that God expected him to have. Psalm 78, 72, God says, I've told David from shepherding the sheep to come and shepherd my people. Do you know that that God has in store for you if you take that step of obedience? So in the end, 2 Samuel 24, 24, the Bible says, uh, David decided to give that. He says, I will not give to the Lord my God. That cost me nothing. God has spoken to him about the, what, the vineyard of around that he is who should go there, erect an altar, and make a sacrifice. And I'm talking to you out there. Praise God. Because I believe sincerely with all the messages that are going to God is speaking to you. And when this was done and God accepted that, that was offered. Then David made plans. This time it was David. Because he knew his God. In 1 Chronicles chapter 22 verse 5 it says he, will, he is going to build a temple that will be exceedingly magnificent for glory and for fame for his God. I don't know what you have conceived in your heart for your God. Amen. But usually sometimes we talk about it but we don't act upon it. I will build a temple for God. In this place that I know his presence is, that will be exceedingly magnificent in all countries for glory and for fame. God prevented him from building it, but he still found a way. Because the Bible says in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 1 to 14, David led by he found race. Some people say, sometimes people have what? What are we fundraising for? We are doing this for God's glory, for faith, and for glory. Why? We have seen all the ministry that has been represented here. The psalmist says in Psalm 19, verse 4, their voices have gone to the ends of the world. This was God actually what? Prophesying about this time and age. 
the time of television, of social media, reaching the ends of the world with the gospel. But we need your support and your help to be able to keep this ministry running. Dr. Terry told you, I'm a missionary. I travel to the ends of the world. There are people who sometimes see me here doing the work of God. But why is this necessary? Because there was a time in prophecy in the book of Amos, in Amos chapter 8, verse 10 and 11, when God spoke, he says, there is a great hunger that is coming. He says, it's not a hunger for literal food and thirst for literal water, but it's a hunger for the word of God and the thirst. He says, people will be wandering from place to place. You are blessed. You sit in the cozy comfort of your church and you have your pastor, you have your, but there are places they don't have this luxury. There are places even by law they cannot even hear the gospel. The cross TV and the way TV is their church. And all these men and women of God anointed and empowered and appointed by God and assigned these are their men and women of God. The only voice that they hear in this wilderness. So this is the call that God is asking you to support. So as I'm standing here, I just want to reason with you on one scripture alone. In Luke chapter 6 verse 38, he said, give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaking together. Even to overflowing shall men pour into your bosom. This established what? A natural principle. The law of reciprocity. One good turn deserves another. We give people things in their birthday special occasions. Do you think when your birthday comes, that person will forget about you? When you reach out to a person in a time of need, when your time of need comes, even in the natural, we believe in that. How much more about our God? In Haggai chapter 2 verse 8, he said, the silver and the gold, they are mine. Nobody has more wealth than anything. But the point is this. God is calling us to be partners with this great and awesome vision that he has given. This vision sees it to be Dr. Joseph's. Because when David spoke in 1 Chronicles chapter 29, there were leaders who came with their resources to come and back up. Even the Gentile king, King Hera of Ty, came to support King Solomon in building the temple. You are out there. You are on TV land. You are watching us. And I believe God is speaking to your heart. It is about time. You see, good intention don't build a kingdom. It is good what? Action. When it comes to good intention, everybody has a good intention. Oh, I want to help pastor do this. I want to help pastor do this. But you take a step of faith. It doesn't matter. Whatever God has blessed you with, just bring it. And it will help move the kingdom forward. And as I'm speaking, I'm about to pray. I thank God for the men and women that have spoken and prayed. And I know you have heard you have been over preached tonight. But I believe God is speaking to your heart. Because in Haggai chapter 1 verse 14, the Bible says uh, when the prophet Haggai prophesied, uh, God moved the heart of the people and they gave. And I know God is moving your hearts to be able to give to support this work. So I'm praying in Jesus' name that anything that is of a hindrance, and I know that any time God gives us an opportunity, let us see this. Let us see this. The generation that God spoke in Esther chapter 35, that bore the ark of the tabernacle, of the presence. They had that opportunity once. When that tabernacle was built, no other regeneration was asked to build another tabernacle for God. But those people who did it, they earned a memorial for their seed, for themselves and for their seed. As we see in Acts chapter 10 verse 4, Cornelius, the angel came and spoke to him in his house, broad daylight, and says, your arms given and your prayer have become a memorial before the Lord. You want to give something that will be a memorial before God. When David did what he did, 
When God says, I found David the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, and you do everything after my heart and my mind. And David did what God, the Bible says, when David even moved on, there were successive kings who descended from who were more wicked. But because of the memory of David, God didn't destroy them. God saved them. You may have children after you. Great, 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 that will come after you. They may not know God the way you know him. They may not serve God, but your name will become a benediction and a blessing. Because there is a memorial before the Lord. I want to pray with you right now and encourage you. I'm taking a step of faith here. And I want you to join me. I want to start. We need 300,000. And I say this with my hands lifted up. And I know this is from God. As this ministration was going on, the woman of God was ministering. And I was sitting down here. The Lord showed me a man watching a television. You are not even a Christian. I think you are borderline. You just watch Christian shows, but you are not a Christian. Your name is Ibrahim. But there is another name that is attached to it. You are sitting in your sitting room on the arm of the, of the sofa at the one end and you are watching this. You have a problem with your heart and I think it is something that is in the family. I think your father too had that heart condition. You are sitting down there and watching. And the Lord spoke to me to tell you, Ibrahim, you are somewhere in the Middle East. And the Lord said, you, Ibrahim, give this amount. Call this station, give this amount. You have struggled with this heart condition for far too long. And God is telling me to tell you, you just take this step of faith, call this station, and sow the seed. Because he's going to heal you miraculously of that heart problem that you have. This is what the Lord showed me. This is what the Lord showed me. So you are out there and the Lord has seen you and seen your challenge. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for this exact words that you laid in my spirit. And I declare it by faith in Jesus' name. And I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that this man that you have singled out, but not only that, but all those men and women of faith who are hearing this, Father God, give them the heart. In Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 29, you declared, oh, that they may have a heart like this to fear me and to obey me, that it may be well with them and with their children, children. I am praying in the name of Jesus Christ. That, Father God, we will not be the people in Mark chapter 7, verse 7, who follow you with our mouths, but not our hearts. But we will be people who are dedicated and committed with our hearts, mighty God. Seeking you with all our hearts and with all our souls. I pray for this gentleman in the name of Jesus. That, the Father God, in Jesus' name, by this prophetic declaration, let your word come to pass and bless your people. I'm standing here, brothers and sisters. This ministry must be supported. This is ours. This is God's broadcasting corporation. Serving the needs of the world. Disseminating the gospel of salvation and healing. Bringing hope to everyone. I challenge you, brothers and sisters. Call in and give and support this ministry. May God bless you even as you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, was that powerful? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're getting ready to watch a video, and it's Brenda Epperson, a Hollywood actress, and Joseph Nazarella. And it was a message to refugees in the Middle East to be still, be at peace. Stay where you are. And we're going to watch this video, and it's going to touch you because the people that it's talking about in this video is the people that we touch with this television network. Let us watch this video.
and let's be in agreement with what this Bible is doing in the Middle East and what this network is doing in the Middle East and what Joseph Nazarella is doing around the world. Hallelujah, Brenda. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I, I like to introduce you to the uh, the audience around the world. Who is Brenda? Who is Brenda? And and how you start? And uh, what does make us like make this video clip? The Lord is showing us a very good things, and He has a plan for what we're doing right now. He does. You know, He has a plan for everybody. Yes. Jeremiah 29:11 says, "I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not harm you." And I'm just so excited that we came together all these years <laughs> later. Um, you know, I was Ashley on the Young and the Restless. And <laughs> in Egypt, yeah. <laughs> in Egypt and, and um, Turkey, Romania, I, oh, all Ashley. over. All Africa, you know. I Africa. have a friends from Africa. They know who is Ashley. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. and we have been very good follower for you and well, very good big you. fans. Thank you so much. <laughs> well I hope you understand my not being at the board meeting. Only my bed is moving. I am frozen in fear, wondering why my bed is shaking. The, the cabbie drove off with your presentation. He fired you? You want to drive this car all the way to California? Yes, it'll be fine. We don't have anything here. When she and her best friend decide to move and drive cross country, things don't start off the way they like. Can, can you fix it? You've got yourselves just one option. Hating this. What else do you want? I'm in 
من أخشى من خوف الليل ولا من سهم يطير في النهار Praise the Lord. You know, I don't know if you know this, <clears throat> but Joseph Nazarala was one of the most popular singers, secular singers, in all of Egypt. Matter of fact, I think he used to sing and the, and the, uh, the girls would do the dance. And he was amazing and, and on top of the world in his career. But you know what? He gave up all of that to serve Jesus. Amen. Amen. And you know, I'll tell you something. I met, I met a doctor from Egypt. I, I met a doctor from Egypt, and I was talking to, it was a husband and wife, and I said, oh, by the way, you're from Egypt. Did you ever hear of a singer named Joseph Nazarella? And they went, Joseph Nazarella? Joseph Nazarella? They got all excited because he was, he, was, he was like Tony Bennett was back in the day or, you know, like one of the big time stars here. Amen. Frank Sinatra. One of the big, big time, Elvis Presley, he was that. He was all that and the more in, in Egypt. So he was something. And I just, listening to him there, I can see where he would really touch people. And now he touches them for Jesus with his music. Amen. We're getting ready to hear another amazing worship team. This is an, from the living word of Garden Grove. This is the worship team. We know because it flows from the top, we understand that your pastor is very anointed too, right? Amen. We're going to hear from him in a minute. Let's hear from you now, the worship team from Living Word of Garden Grove. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of that we serve a good God? He's good all the time. And the Bible says in Luke 10, 19, that he is giving you the authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the powers of the enemy, that nothing will harm us. Come on, come on. Here at the Cross TV, we just want to let everyone know that Jesus Christ loves you and that you have the power to overcome all the powers of the enemy. Whether you be sick or bound or addicted to any type of drug, Jesus Christ can set you free. Can I get an amen in here? Yeah. Hallelujah. We've been deceived by the devil too long. We're gonna tear the devil's kingdom down. What he said was his has been ours all along. We're gonna tear the devil's kingdom down. Going up to the high places, going up to the high places, going up to the high places to tear the devil's kingdom down. Let's go up, going up to the high places, going up to the high places, going up to the high places to tear the devil's kingdom down. We're gonna reclaim everything the devil has stolen. 
one like you. We come together tonight to lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of Jesus. Who's worthy? Who's worthy? Who's loving? Our healer, our master, our savior, our deliverer. There's no one like you. 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 Wow. You know, we've had such anointed music tonight. And you know, the praise has been awesome, and the praise brings the presence of God. But it's the worship that brings the miracles. It's the worship that brings the Holy Spirit. It's the worship that brings the glory. And you know, the anointing only carries you so far, but the glory, oh, the glory. You know, there was Azusa Street. They, 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 they just walked in. And their eyes opened. They walked in. They got out of wheelchairs. They walked in. They were Nobody prayed for them. Nobody laid hands on them. Nobody did nothing but the glory of God. The glory of God. And the glory of God is here tonight. And the glory of God is going through that screen touching you there. There are those out there tonight listening to this and watching this that are being healed, being delivered, being set free, and being saved. And now, Pastor John Jones, Tories, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Pastor Tories is the senior pastor of Living Word of Garden Grove. And I, I didn't realize this, but, but the anointed worship leader was his wife. Amen. So obviously, the anointing didn't fall from the top there, did it? Amen. Let us welcome Pastor Torres, as he comes and delivers the word. Amen. All right, all right. You go ahead and take your seat. Praise the Lord. Well, it's so good to be here. I just want to thank uh, Shiloh Tabernacle, the, the crew here. That's, that's, uh, they're just helping us out with the sound and putting it all together. And we appreciate you so much. And your pastor, praise the Lord. Also, we want to thank Dr. Joseph for allowing us to be here. And then uh, our Bishop Ryan Beck. Amen. But uh, you know what, as I, I've been praying and just thinking on, on, on this telethon and, and what we're believing for, $300,000 to a mind that, that's simple, to, to our simple mind or to our mind that, that doesn't believe or, or, or maybe has a, a limits to how far we can believe, that 300000 sounds impossible. But to some of you that are watching this screen right now, for some of you that are sitting behind that screen and you, you worship with us and you've heard every one of these anointed speakers and, and, and you've been listening up and your heart has been responding to the screen. Even when, as we're lifting our hands here, I, I, I know that you're lifting your hands in your front room, in front of your TV screen, in front of your computer screen. And you know what? That's what you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. And, and so to you all around the world, $300,000 is nothing to you. Because we can do it together. Yeah. See, in our churches, uh, uh, see, we're, we're a ministry of, of churches, uh, a, a whole family of churches. We're, we're, our, our name, it, it, it's, 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 a, it's a name that God gave us. We're living word. Hallelujah. But the ministry that God has given us, it's to reach the lost. The vision that we have is to reach and to teach, to mend and to send. And we're planting churches around the world. Hallelujah. Yeah. And you see, as we do this, uh, we're, we're called a family, hallelujah, because a family, amen, we do it together. And so with the Cross TV right now and the Way TV, we're, we're looking to you for your help to join our family here, hallelujah. And you know what? Right there on the CrossTV.com, you can go there and with your credit card, you can make a donation there, hallelujah. And, or, or you can go to PayPal. Come on, how many of you know everybody has PayPal these days? Everybody has PayPal, and, and it's available for you. But you know what? If you're still living in old school, and that's all right, because I'm an old school kind of guy myself, hallelujah. You can write a check and mail it right in. There's a P.O. box on the website there of the Cross TV. But as that, I, I just want to say, man, I, I believe in this. I believe in this network. Let me tell you why. In, in February of 2015, almost two years ago, hallelujah, on February 9th of 2015, my, my little girl got sick. You see, she got sick. 
She was diagnosed at eight years old with diabetes, and from eight until 19 years old, she lived with that. But then she got sick. Uh, uh, that, that not, not the diabetic uh, sickness, but her, her, her kidney failed on her. And so on the 9th of February there, we're sitting in the hospital. The doctor came in the door, and he said, we have to remove that kidney now or your daughter's going to die. And you know what? Right there on that bed, she started to go out, and, and they moved into action, and they responded so fast, and, and they removed her kidney. And, and in a 19-year-old, you're not supposed to lose your kidney. We're pastors. We're, we're, we're helping people. We're, we're doing the, our, the work for God. We're doing everything. So, so why would it be us? But you know what? Amen. I didn't have that question in my heart because I learned a long time ago. That if God can give his son, Jesus, then who am I to say, why me? Hallelujah. But let me tell you in the long story short, amen, that, that uh, uh, after that ninth date, they took out her, her kidney. And, and, and in one week, she went into a coma. And, and because of, uh, of, I mean, just so many things that stacked against her, uh, she went into a coma for 69 days. 69 days, and on the 25th of February, 2015, the doctor came in the room, and he gave us two more hours to watch her on that machine, and at 10 o'clock in the morning, they were going to come in and shut the life support off. We knew it was coming. We seen them for days uh, working hard uh, to try to keep her alive or to try to bring her back from, from that sickness that, that she was in. But let me tell you something, church, uh, because this ain't a sad story. This isn't a broken story. And this isn't a story about death, amen. This is a story about serving a miracle, God. We serve a miracle, God. And the Bible says that God is able. He's able to do the exceeding and the abundant more than our imagination can imagine. Because I'll tell you, looking at her on that bed, oh, it was difficult to stir up an imagination to see her come back. But I'll tell you, amen, in faith we declared, yo, if she has purpose in her body, purpose in her life, then you can't let her go, God. And you know what, on that 25th, that doctor came in the door. And instead of saying they were going to shut her off, I'm so grateful for Chalk Hospital. They, they came and said they had one more option to try. And you see, we, we thought that day, all right, it's all over. She's going to come back now. And you know what, well, when, uh, on, uh, at, they changed hospitals and they were doing everything for her and she was still in a coma and she was on a machine called the ECMO machine. That was an artificial heart and artificial lungs. Uh, this machine was living for our little girl for 15 days uh, and then the machine failed. Hello, how many of you know machines fail sometimes? And you know what, that machine failed and, and whether we wanted to or they wanted to or not, they had to remove her from the machine and just believe that she was strong enough now to, to hopefully make it. And you see, I'm getting to why I believe in this. Because I'll tell you, when we were sitting inside that hospital room, 25th of February, they told us she was going to die. On March 5th, we were having a miracle service in our church with, with Pastor Ryan back here. We prayed for souls for five hours, laying hands uh, on the sick, uh, laying hands on those that were demon-possessed and they were getting saved and set free, laying hands on those that had been bound for years by drugs and alcohol and all kinds of sin. We prayed for five hours, and then the phone call comes in. Your daughter had a stroke. You need to get back over here. So we rushed to the hospital, and it was then that the doctors again told us that our little girl was going to die. That's two times. And you know what? We just, we'd look at them, and we'd say, thank you. And then when they'd walk out the door, my wife and I would say, we don't receive that word. We don't receive that. Hallelujah. And I'm so grateful. This is all my family right here. These are all my kids. These are my children. Hallelujah. That's my son-in-law right there. And, and he would, we would stand together and pray. And let me tell you what we believed. Every time we received a word that said she wasn't going to come back and she was going to die, God gave us this word in Isaiah chapter 58. Maybe tonight you're looking at this screen and that doctor gave you a bad report. Maybe that doctor said to you that you're not going to make it past six more months or even three months. Well, I'm here to let you know, amen, that there's a God in heaven that will heal you from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. But you've got to accept them in your heart. 
and as you accept them in your heart, hallelujah, his blood will wash you from the inside out. But watch this in Isaiah chapter number 58. The Bible says, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing will spring forth speedily, hallelujah. And your righteousness shall go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. That scripture there, we plastered it next to her bed, and we asked every person that walked in the door, nurses, doctors, friends, family, uh, we need you to pray that scripture over her. We need you to believe in faith with us. Hallelujah. And you know what? On that fifth, you know what? God didn't allow her to go after that stroke. And then some things happened after that where bringing the story down to a close and telling you why I believe in this. They told us five times in a row in a matter of three months that our daughter was going to die. And they would give her 24 more hours to try to pull out or else they'd have to let her go. And I'll tell you, this phone right here, connected to social media, because of public TV like this and because of public radio and because of the, how many bodies you can reach by just posting and, and asking others to share. We spread the word of my daughter's uh, uh, situation and, and what we were going through with the world. Radios were, were, were bringing up my daughter to pray for her. I believe that there was even TV programs that were lifting her up because people were calling in one after another, praying for the same prayer request. People all over the world were messaging me and saying, we're praying for you. My Bible study is praying for you. My church is praying for you. We're lifting you up. We're believing in God that God's going to bring her back. Hallelujah. So as we look in, as I look into the screen tonight, you know, you can't buy a miracle. But I'll tell you, you can declare, amen, as you sow a seed into ground that's good. The cross TV and the way TV is good ground to sow seed in. $300,000 is a small matter to God when you and I can lock arms together as a family and say, we need 300 people to sow 1,000, or we need 3,000 people to sow 100. Or, or maybe you say, I don't have 100 or 1,000, but you have a 20. I want you to call in with your PayPal or with your credit card, and I want you to give a donation because we need this word to stay on. We need this station to stay on. Why? Because we need to be able to spread those kind of prayer requests, those prayer requests so that people around the world can help us pray. And as you are praying for us, believe us that we're praying for you. We're praying for you and believing God for you. You know what, today, hallelujah, I look over through my wife and my daughter here, and this is my little girl. You see what the devil meant for bad to try to take her life. God took her from that deathbed and said the purpose is not done inside of you. I'm going to pour my life back in you. I'll pour my healing upon your body. And today she's playing that guitar because that's the desire of her heart. She's alive. She's not dead. My grandson has his mama. My son has his wife. And we serve a big God. But we need your help, friends. We need your help. You see, what, what is all this? Amen. I'll tell you, 24 years ago, I was a good-for-nothing drug addict. I was a gang member about 30 miles from this place where we're standing tonight. But Jesus decided to reach into that barrio, into that ghetto, and pick me up and pull me out. And then God gave me a pastor. His name is Reuben Reina. Hallelujah. He saw something in me, and he said, I'm, I need you by me. Hallelujah. And you know what? We've been planning churches. 20 churches in the Philippines, uh, churches in Brazil, churches in Colombia, churches all over California. Friday night, we launched out 11 more churches around California, New Mexico, and Nevada. Hallelujah. Because we serve a God that's able, but God needs you and I to link together in partnership so that we can keep this ministry reaching the world. Thank you for listening. Hallelujah. But right now, pick up your phone. Get on your website and just begin to sow in. Again, you can't buy a miracle, amen, but you could sow seed in good ground and God will pour blessing on you. I want to pray for you right now. You say, I'm sick and, and, or I'm no good. Maybe you're bound in drugs. 
Listen, I was a drug addict, and, and some of our members, my, my, my sons in the faith, they were dope fiends. They were dope fiends. But Jesus Christ set them free, and today they're sober, they're clean, they're right-standing citizens, hallelujah, going to work every day, raising their children for God. So right there, I want you to raise your hand towards the screen. And I'll pray, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for your power and your love. And God, I pray that your Holy Ghost hound dog from heaven will go right through these cameras into the TVs and computers and screens of those that have their hands raised now. And I pray your anointing and healing, oh God, would be poured upon them. Right now I bind cancer. I bind diabetes. I bind cholesterol problems. We come against them in the name of Jesus. Oh, I say to that mountain to be removed and cast into the sea now in Jesus' name. And I declare healing over you. Receive it today in Jesus' name. And come on now, lift up your hand and just thank the Lord today. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a big clap offering. Hallelujah. Woo. Whoa. If that wasn't a powerful testimony, I don't know what was. That was a powerful testimony. You know, if that didn't touch you, I don't know what does. I'm going to have... Worship leader Israel Love, come up for a minute. Just give us a brief word. And then the man who was God had gave the vision to do all this will give us a few words as well. And then we'll close out with the incredible worship that we've just heard. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord. Amen. I want to quickly talk to you about the seed. I'm going to read this verse. Hebrews 11. Verse 4, it says, By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. Many of you might not know, but your gift can speak for you. Some of you might remember Cornelius. He was praying, but he was not only praying. The Bible says that, his arms came up as a memorial. And as a result, his whole household got saved. Uh, many of you might be, might be even praying for your household to be saved. I want you to use your seed as a contact. You know, God always needs something. You know, how many know that zero times one million is what? Who's a, who's a mathematician here? <laughs> what am I saying to you? You've got to give God something to work with. You've got to give God something to work with. And your seed has to testify for you. What can it testify? It can testify healing. It can testify salvation. It can testify a new house, a new car. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. What's important is that you've got to give God something to work with. So I'm going to quickly right now, I'm going to pray for the sick because God has anointed me to pray for the sick. And if you, even if you're sick here at the audience, I want you to believe God. And God's going to heal you. Amen? I want you to lay your hands wherever you're sick. I stand in the authority of Jesus Christ. I command every sickness, every disease. I command diabetes to go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I ask you to minister to your people. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, if God has healed you, I want you to dial that number. And remember, God needs something to work with. So I want you to give him a seed, believe him, believe him, and your seed will testify for you. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, many of you out there watching tonight, you can write a check for a thousand, but when you write a check for a thousand, it's not a thousand, it's two thousand. Some of you can write a check for five, it's ten. And 10 is 20, and 50 is 100. We need to keep this ministry moving. We need to keep the gospel going to around the world. You know, there are people that write checks for 300,000 for boats. There are people that write checks for 200,000 for automobiles. I drive to, if I'm in Beverly Hills, I see all day long cars that cost 250,000, 300, a car. We're talking about investment in lives. An investment in lives. It's amazing that, that, you know, 
what people find of value that's material. I once heard someone say, I've never seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul. I've never seen a hearse pulling a U-Haul. You can't take it with you. And those that store up, like the rich man who said, oh, I'm, I'm good. I'm going to build new barns and store it up. And, the, and God said, you fool. Today your soul is required of you. You don't know how long you have. You don't know. You could be gone tomorrow. But if you sow seed, let me tell you something. It says your rewards are limited here on earth. But your rewards are forever in heaven. Everything you put into this network goes in as a reward for you in heaven. So I want to encourage you. Go to your phones. Go to the internet. Call now. Make a pledge. And now, you know, with, there, there is no vision without a, a person that God gives a vision to. You know, God gave a vision to Billy Graham to go and fill stadiums around the world. But guess what? Billy Graham couldn't have done it on his salary. It required people to support him. And guess what? Because people supported him, millions have been saved around the world. Yeah. And Reinhard Bunke went to Africa with over a million people being saved in one crusade. But it required money to go. But guess what? With all the people that Billy Graham reached and Reinhard Bunke reached, this network right here can reach more than all of them put together. You need to realize that. You need to realize what you're sowing into. One day you're going to get to heaven and there's going to be a long line of people. And you're going to turn around and say, who are they? And Jesus is going to say, the ones you invested in, they're here because of you. So without any further ado, the man who's responsible for this whole network, the one that's created a platform for us to be a voice and go to the world, the man that is being obedient to God and was, I, you know, I heard his testimony, they were going to take his life. But guess what? Jesus saved him for such a time as this. Amen. Joseph Nazarella. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Terry Warren. Thank you, everybody here today. Can, can you believe that we have two incredible worship leaders today, two churches today? Hallelujah. They rock and roll here. Hallelujah. And I'm, I need also to sing again. Up, what is the song was up like? Going up to the high places. And I'm, when, I, when I was singing there with you guys, I feel like this network in satellite after satellite after satellite in the spirit. And the anointing that you have is I, I, I connect with it while you are worshiping that. And, and I feel like you guys paying the price. Everybody anointed is, is paying the price. Like you paid the price that you have, your heart was like bumping like this over your daughter. I have the same testimony with my son. He had a seizure. I was singing in the church and then suddenly they called me. Like I find the, the ambulance outside. I'm singing on the platform and some, I hear the, the ambulance and then some, some, all the church is now empty and I'm singing alone on the platform. They said that your son is inside the ambulance and your, your wife have been like also like gone like when she saw like her son is dying and then I, I I dropped the guitar and I went there and my son literally died they said died they they shaving his his head inside the the ambulance and then I hugged him I said he shall live because this is your gift <laughs> and he is now 12 years old his name is Joel so when the anointing is not free <laughs> Guys, the anointing is not yours. The anointing to the Lord is going to use you with this anointing. The presence of God is amazing. You can enjoy it. But the anointing is not for you. When the Lord do the fresh anointing, he's anoint you for the nations, for somebody else. I, I, I met that, that amazing man of God. He paid the price to be in this position right now, calling the people around the world. We received at least from about 45 calls. And he was like, Saying that, somebody right now in front of the screen, he has a problem in his knees and the Lord is touched him. And then five minutes later, hello, Dr. Joseph, how are you? I love this network. 
I am now dancing in front of the Lord. I was having a deep, like the knowledge, the word of the knowledge. The word of the knowledge. That's, that's how the end time ministry should be. That's the end time ministry should be using the media mountain. The media mountain. The Lord is showing also that there is another testimony. I'm going to give the hint of it. One of the presidents, he, he passed away. One of the presidents, Dr. Lorella Meyer, I'm not going to mention the name, one of the Arabic presidents, gave his life to Jesus Christ. Like 19 what? 1980 something? We're talking about when? Nineteen eighty two and nineteen eighty seven she visited the same president and she is in his presence and he gave everybody thinking that this president has died as a Muslim. But I know because I have the videos, I have everything, I have the, the document that he gave his life to Jesus Christ. <laughs> and one day this network will release this testimony. We're gonna, you know, we are serious now. We are serious. We are in the end time 2017 and 5777. And this is number seven years that we are on air. It's not by chance that that's we are doing the accomplish what the Lord is doing. And there is Muslims will come to Jesus Christ through the, the, men, the woman of God and men of God. See, the, 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 the Jewish people is coming to Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. La, 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 la. Amazing worshiper and amazing people, amazing testimonies. Pastor Ruth, thank you for coming. Really, you know, sometimes we have, the, we have her, her, her program. She was sewing in this network with all the team coming here. Thank you for the team. Hallelujah. Thank you for this team, for this church. And the worshiper, Pastor Tim, thank you very much for you coming. And I, why I need that, why I'm, I, I'm saying that, I'm saying that. I, over my imagination to have the right people in the right time on the right place. Okay. Believe me, I'm saying that from all my bottom of my heart, right timing, right place with the right people. So that's why we're going up. Can we sing that while we are standing right now? Can we do that right now? Can we do that? There is a big, a, a good food, right? By the way, Pastor Ryan and his team is doing us a grill outside. But I believe the Lord that while we are doing that, there is, there is a number of seven on your seat. This is the, 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 the four numbers that the Lord is showing me. $1,000 for every Gideons coming to be 300 Gideons. And there is people will sow 777, $777. dollars. They're gonna hand the, the the envelope and they put it on the mail or hand the network this. And some people doesn't have just like 777. They have 77 dollars. Some people I I got a lot of people. They said that I need prophetically sowing a seed in this network. By the way, this envelope I know you already did sow a seed. This is for two options. You can send it back by mail, by, by mail to this network. And also there is a number here on the screen. You can send seven, seven, $77 or $7. But just connect with the anointing here for number seven. Because the Lord in his way to do a miracle in your life. He's going to heal you. He's going to give you the salvation right now. People from Saudi Arabia, from Kuwait, from Jordan, from Latin America, from Asia. People is coming to Jesus Christ through this network. How much is this? How well, worse is this soul to come to Jesus Christ? 2015, the Lord gave us. ISIS group leader came to this network giving his heart to Jesus Christ. 2015. And there is another people right now, they're going to look at those programs and they do that. Going up, going up. We've Ooh. been to see. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, lift your hands and receive the anointing. What he said was he. Hallelujah! Come out! 
church. Going up to the high places. Hallelujah. Going up to the high places. Hallelujah. Going up to the high places. To tell the devil things. Let's go, let's go. Going up. up. Going up to the high places. Going up to the high places. never go to the cross in some religions we're saying that he went all the way to the cross to get us up and up and up he conquered everything he conquered and he has the victory over our life if you are defeated somehow lift the banner of the cross right now and say that by the blood of Jesus I have the victory I, I feel like another song guys come on another song hallelujah Another song, this, this praise and worship team is amazing. The food is ready, but we're going to do it again. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel the Lord is, is making you humble yourself and dance in front of the Lord. This TV is not a religious. This TV is free. He's going to set you free in Jesus' name. Humble yourself like David and play in front of the Lord. The glory is here. Hallelujah. Glory night. How many know that we can't stop giving him praise? Hallelujah. No matter what comes our way. Can't stop, can't stop raising his name. I just can't stop raising his name. I Hallelujah. just can't stop raising the name of Jesus. Raising the name. Can't stop, can't stop raising his name.
Raising his name, no, I don't want to stop. Raising the name of Jesus. Jesus. Now tell me all you feel. Tell me all you feel. Come on. Hey! Tell me all you free. So you got the victory. I got the victory. Hallelujah! Raising his name. Worship you, Lord. We praise and worship Jesus. I don't wanna stop. I don't wanna stop praising His name. No, I don't wanna stop praising His name. We're not gonna stop. No, I don't wanna stop praising the name. I feel that anointing. Lift your hand and say, Jesus. Jesus, He's the King of Kings. Jesus, He's the Lord of Lords. Jesus. La 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 Israel for Jesus la 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 Can we do it again? We are releasing this sound right now. Lord, we are releasing this sound right now. I'm going to ask Pastor Jean, come here. Pastor Ruth, come here. We're going to have two prayer right now. No, I, I see, I see the, the war. I see we are winning the war. We have the victory. La 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 Release the sound La 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 Hallelujah. Father, thank you. Your word says that no weapon formed against us will prosper, God. And Lord, I pray for all those that are watching and all those that are in the studio tonight. Father, your word says that you promise victory to us. And that we don't fight for victory, but from victory. Hallelujah. And so I pray, Father, that that strength would be stirred up. And that, Lord God, as your word says that the enemy is underneath our feet, uh, that we would get a dance going on uh, and stomp them out. Hallelujah. Stomp them out in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Wow. The atmosphere of the third heaven, 777 Glory Lane Way. Hallelujah. Third heaven. My God is open heaven. So those who are watching and you're being tagged by the Holy Ghost to so my God, this is super open heaven. Anything you need, the great I am is here. I thank you once again, oh God. Mm, this is broadcasting. From the third heaven, all throughout the first heaven right now. Oh, bypassing the second heaven. Because no weapon, just like Pastor said, shall ever form. It just broke boom, nothing can defeat the people of God when they have the heart of the joyful giving. And once again, thank you, thank you, Father, for even allowing us to enter in. Boldly before your throne, O oh God, of grace and mercy, that we can get all the graces, all the truth, O oh God, in times of our need. 
I know this is going to be an amazing time. The next five years, we are in such love revolution, oh God. Let the love of God reign more than ever in the hearts of people that they will give willingly, give joyfully, oh God. So in the name of Jesus, we bless America. We bless United America, all the nations, oh God. Oh And once again, thank you for Dr. Nasrallah, oh God, for the big God vision. It shall come to pass because it's your vision. And we all touch and agree. We all touch and agree. Everyone that are watching, touch and agree. And it's done in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, we've come to the end of our telethon. We are so happy that you joined us. The, the anointing was here. The word was here. The worship was here. And the word is going forth. Tonight, don't hesitate. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Right now, call in. Make a pledge. Get on the internet. Donate. Go to PayPal. All of the directions are on the screen. You can donate right now. And remember, a thousand becomes two, and five becomes ten. Ten becomes twenty. And there are you out there that can afford to write a check for the whole 300. And I know this, that it'll be the greatest investment you ever made because it'll be investment in lives. And it'll be an investment in a future of millions of people coming to Jesus. So don't hesitate. Go to your phone now. Go on the internet now and give to this ministry because this is a ministry where we see lives changed, we see lives touched. We see people saved. We see people delivered. We see people healed. And we see people set free. And it's what Jesus told us to do. So give now and put an inheritance into your future in heaven. Thank you for watching. And stay tuned for tomorrow night, same time, 7 o'clock, California, Pacific Standard Time in the United States. And there'll be many, many more anointed people that you want to hear. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Bye. Bye. Amen. Let us worship. Let us send them out with worship.